Okay folks, we are now inside the power shed and I'm going to show you how everything connects in here. This is where really everything comes together in here. The, the only things that are really outside are the solar panels and then the wind generator which I'll show you in a couple minutes. But uh, I'll show you where the solar power comes in. Okay, so it goes right into there and comes back in to this unit. Now this is another DC system disconnect. You're probably wondering, didn't we just come from a disconnect? Why do we need another one? Well, first of all, code um, requires that we have one on the outside and the inside. Um, and this also will disconnect the battery bank. So you can see right there it says array. Hope you can see that. Uh, and then and that one says a battery. So this one would completely shut down batteries and the uh, PV array if we ever had to work on this system. That's why you need that. Then the power goes into this system here. And this says DC disconnect as well, but it's really the overcurrent module that is the functional part of this, this particular unit here. It works in conjunction with the charge controller there to regulate the amperage going into the battery bank. Okay, so this unit, which is the actual charge controller and the overcurrent module, really work hand in hand to regulate the power going into and out of the battery bank. So you'll see that this unit has power coming in from this is from uh, the PV array, comes into here, gets regulated by the charge controller. Okay. This has an out going into the battery bank, which I'll show you in a second, and also goes out into the inverter. Okay, so that's a little confusing, but essentially what the power is doing is it's coming out of this unit into the overcurrent module, which is controlled by the charge controller out of the overcurrent module into the battery bank here okay and also this is why this pipe is so thick because there's wires coming out of the battery bank going back into this unit and then into the inverter here okay so this unit here basically just sort of organizes the wires and will disconnect them if need be becomes from the array to the controller to the batteries away from the batteries and to the inverter okay a lot of times what we're seeing now with these new units is that the charge controller and this unit are really kind of integrated so it's not quite as confusing and this is actually a pretty easy setup I can take the front panel off that and you can see that there's directions on where to wire everything it's actually easier than it looks but right now I want to go over uh, the charge controller because this is really where uh, you get to see the most. This is where you get to actually see what you're producing. So let's try to zoom in on that. Okay, so this is an Outback Power Systems uh, I think it's an FM60 charge controller and I really like Outback for the charge control capabilities and with the new systems like I said this unit would be an Outback as well and it would be integrated in with this. Um, so first thing we're going to look at here is in and it's, it's fluctuating between 79 and 80 volts. Now if you remember earlier, see if I can do this, earlier I said that our array was each string was generating 60 volts. Okay, so why does that say 80 volts? Well, we have what we call a nominal voltage and then a maximum voltage on an array. A nominal voltage, nominal just means name. So we're naming it a 12 volt. But a 12 volt panel under maximum sunshine is actually going to generate more like 18 or 19 volts. Or actually, it's actually closer to 17 volts. Okay? So when, uh, let's say that it's um, 17 volts maybe 16 volts times five solar panels all wired in series that would equal 
80 volts. 16 times 5 would be 80 volts. So that's what our system is actually generating right now. Uh, you can see that we've got some good sunshine still, so that's what we see on here. Is it's actually 80, 80 volts. Okay, now out here, that's what's actually in the battery bank. So what happened here? We went from 78 to 23. Okay, this charge controller is what we call a multiple power point tracking charge controller. And that is a fancy way of saying that this charge controller is the most efficient kind of charge controller you can get because it regulates the voltage and amperage with maximum efficiency. But it will also change the voltage. It's changing 80 volts down to 23 to 24 volts. And the reason it does that is because it's the most efficient way to get the power out of the panels is to get the highest voltage. Okay, and there's some scientific theory, I, I don't even really understand it, but they want to get the panels at the highest voltage possible, and then you want to put it into your batteries at a, a voltage that's efficient for the batteries, and that's usually a lower voltage. So this charge controller takes the voltage down from 80 to 24 volts, okay, and it does that by, cons it conserves energy, it lo uses a little bit of energy in that process, but if you under if you know your power formula which is volts times amps equals watts you'll know that if you reduce the voltage to maintain the wattage the amperage must go way up so that's what this does it boosts up the amperage busts down the uh, voltage and maintains the wattage okay so that's what we're seeing here high voltage here low amperage, low voltage, high amperage. Okay, if you take those two numbers, if you take 77 by 11, well you get about, let's see, let's say it's almost 800 watts and that bears out right there, that's our wattage, almost 800 watts. Well 24 by 32, that's about 800 watts as well. So it's conserving the wattage, it's just changing the voltage and amperage. Okay. You can see right here, this is MPPT, multiple power point tracking. That's what this, this unit does. The kilowatt hours, that's what we've generated today. 1.6 kilowatt hours. So we generated 1,000 watts for one hour. That would be one kilowatt hour. Remember I told you that we had a 1,300 watt array. Right now we're getting about 800 watts out of it and it's because we've just got a light, light little cloud cover. I don't know if you can really see that. You can kind of, the camera will adjust, but you can just kind of see light cloud cover. So we're getting about half the rated power out of this system. So when the sun is high over the panels, no clouds, that will show right around 1250 watts. Um, every once in a while when it's really cold, it'll actually show Every once in a while when it's really cold, it'll actually show uh, like 1400 watts because cold lets electricity flow better and more efficiently. That's why we keep our computers cool. That's why there's a fan in this charge controller that you can hear probably. There's a fan in the inverter as well. Uh, temperature affects how electricity flows significantly. Uh, let's talk about the batteries now. So we've got this trunk type thing built. Here's our battery array. Okay. Each battery is a six volt, 350 amp hour battery. These are uh, uh, interstate workaholic batteries. They're called an L16. It's a flooded lead acid. You can tell it's flooded by these little caps here because you screw these off and there's water and there's, well, there's actually sulfuric acid in there right now, but you add distilled water to that on occasion. So it looks similar to a car battery, but if you look down here over to the side, 
you can see they're about actually they're about 18 inches tall and I think each one of those weighs probably oh probably 80 pounds so it's uh it's quite a job getting them in here obviously you fill them up after you put them in so let's look at the wiring of this you can see each battery is wired positive to negative of the next one positive to negative of the next one positive to negative of the next one okay and then this positive one is wired to the positive of the next row over so what does that mean that means that we have a six volt battery so we're adding the voltage one two three four 24, 24 volt battery system and then each row is wired in parallel so we've added the voltage in the row and then the rows add amperage to add capacity okay so this is a 24 volt we could keep adding rows to add more amp hour capacity if I had room over here you could keep adding rows that would mean a that would maintain 24 volts and you would add amp hour capacity again uh, really need to understand that that series and wiring system that we talk about in the in the book um, if you look way down in there you can see that wire the big orange wire that's going off okay it's coming off the negative on this end on this end of the array of batteries okay and then this one over here coming off the positive of this end okay so that's what those two wires this one here and that one all the way at the other corner is what actually what's going out of this unit and into here you wire the final two wires off the end of the battery bank so the batteries are easily the thing that takes the most maintenance ongoing maintenance Okay, you can see I've got a little bit of corrosion in here. Um, I put Vaseline on this one here, you can see, and that's preventing a lot of the corrosion from spreading. But a couple of them have uh, some decent corrosion on them. Uh, it's really key to keep that corrosion off, keep it uh, wiped off clean as much as possible. Also, to keep the bolts, nuts and bolts of everything, really tight. Uh, you're going to get the maximum power out of each unit um, and they're going to last longer if you keep all of the connections in here really, really tight. And I know a lot of solar installers that actually keep a torque wrench handy so that they make sure that they get them tight enough. But this is where uh, this is where I spend the most maintenance. It's still only oh, three hours every six months. Eh, maybe four hours every six months. So it's not bad, it's just twice a year, but uh, the solar panels take almost no maintenance. Uh, I don't really do anything to the solar panels. And um, the inverter and all that uh, really doesn't take much maintenance. A lot of the maintenance need to be, needs to be done on batteries can be done automatically uh, with the system. We have this functionality called Equalize that I'll show you in a second that has to be done. Um, and I'll show you that's the function of the inverter.